Hey guys, it's Ross over at The Daily Jaws. I hope you're well. Got something really special for you now. If you're a Jaws fan and you love sharks, you've probably heard of Ron and Valerie Taylor. For those of you that haven't, Ron and Valerie Taylor are a husband and wife team from Australia and they are two of the most famous and inspirational shark conservationists ever. They also acted as technical consultants on the original Jaws. Now, sadly, Ron passed away back in 2012, but Valerie has continued the fight for sharks and all ocean life. And she's got an incredible new film coming out about her life called Playing With Sharks, The Valerie Taylor Story. Today, I was lucky enough to catch up with not just Valerie herself, but also the film's director, Sally Aitken, and the producer, Bettina Dolan. We talked about sharks, shark movies, and the future of conservation, and also about this incredible film, which starts streaming on Disney+. Plus. From July 23rd. Dive in. But he's... So congratulations on playing the Sharks. Um, I, I've watched the movie twice, literally back to back. Um, it's so inspiring. It's one of the best biographical films I think I've probably ever seen. And you guys have managed to pack so much into 90 minutes. It's incredible. Um, from what I understand, though, you had an absolute treasure trove of resources. You've obviously got the home movies. You know, there was so much new footage that I hadn't seen before, which is incredible. Uh, you also had Valerie's diaries going all the way back to the 1960s and obviously Valerie herself. Now, Sally and Bettina, you know, <laughs> from a filmmaking point of view, that has got to be an absolute gift, right? A real treasure. And, um, you know, the film started like you, when I was inspired by Valerie as a teenager and seeing that image on the front cover of National Geographic. And when you consider what Ron and Valerie have documented, it is so important. And it was such a, a boon for us to be able to have that to work with. And mm. I think more of a challenge of what what to leave out than what to put in and having as you say Valerie's diaries I mean Sally was like day one like an avalanche of content <laughs> <laughs> and it was great because in some ways Sally came to it with this lovely set of fresh eyes because I was totally biased you know like you I'd grown up with Valerie and Ron and Valerie's films and I was completely yeah. obsessed but fellow, Sally was able to bring a new set of eyes to this rich content and find that narrative thread. I was going to say, because you could have done like, you know, the Lord of the Rings extended, extended, extended version edition, couldn't you? You could have like the <laughs> eight hour Valerie Taylor <laughs> story. Playing um, with it, us, playing with squid, yeah. playing with the eels. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, just a the other thing I was just going to say is, you know, it was a, a huge treasure trove and a huge volume and all the rest of it, as Tina says, but also a massive responsibility, given mm. that for a lot of people, this is, you know, beloved footage <laughs> behind the scenes of Jaws, the, you know, the iconic imagery of uh, Blue Water, White Death and so forth. But to hear that a dedicated fan of uh, Valerie's life and legacy <laughs> saw lots of new things, Yes, I feel that. <laughs> Honestly, I was blown away, which is why I was really excited about the film, because I thought it would be a retread of a lot of the old stuff, but I was blown away by just how much new stuff there was. Um, question for Valerie, what's it like sort of open up, opening up your life in this way and then seeing it on screen? That must be a bit of a surreal experience. No, no, no. I've been on the screen many times. Uh, Ron and I were documentary makers, and... Uh, I it was good. I was pleased to have it done. Uh, I'm really pleased that, that Tina decided to make this documentary. I had worked with her before. Ron and I had done a series of three one hours with Tina called um, Shadow of the Shark. And they were good. But mm. they were sort of rounded. It wasn't just sharks. It was many different aspects of our marine uh, uh, adventures and our marine photography. I am grateful it's been made. It, it, it needed to be done for my mm. husband, who's no longer here. He would be happy to have seen the success that this documentary's had. 
Yeah, that was one of the questions I was going to have, you know, what would you think Ron would have would have thought about it? But you've just answered that beautifully. And that was one of the most touching moments in the film for me when you were talking about Ron, because obviously he's a massive, not just inspiration to many people, but obviously played a, a massive part in your life. And one of the other things that was super exciting for me to see during the film was, you know, it was almost like a, a shark conservationist hall of fame. You know, you've got people like Sylvia <laughs> Earle, Wendy Benchley, oh. Rodney Fox, who again, I've, you know, many of us have been following for sort of 30, 40 years. Um, what's it like, Valerie, to be a part of that sort of groundbreaking generation of conservationists? And, and what do you make of sort of today's modern shark conservationists? Well, it's become sort of a fad to be a shark conservationist, really. Uh, I, I, it was for me. It was a battle, always a battle, just to get the fisheries department of New South Wales to ban the taking of sharks for their fins. They wanted to sell the fins. They had to bring in the whole shark, and I had that done. I worked for fisheries on and off for three years to get one thing done. It's not easy. Mm -hmm especially in a country like Australia, where the only good shark is a dead shark, as you know. That's what mm. we say, or used to say. I think the general public's coming around to looking at them in a different way. The last two shark attacks off our coast, they, within the few last few months, the person attacked has not blamed the shark. Hmm. I, I think, think that's, that, yeah, that tells a lot. I was going to say, because I think I, one of the things that um, we sort of find, particularly running a Jaws page, because obviously Jaws is sort of seen as the movie that sort of kickstarted this fascination, but also fear of sharks. The general public do seem to be changing their mind, obviously, the more that we learn. Um, and a question for everybody, what is your sort of position on not just yours, but shark movies in general, do you still think that there's a place for them in modern society or are they still doing the damage potentially that, you know, we, that potentially movies like yours have done? Well, the shark movies they make nowadays are so stupid. I can't imagine anybody <laughs> taking them seriously, really. Are you um, thinking of Sharknado and um, the feature films or more the documentaries? Yeah. I'd probably both. say more the, the, the feature films, I would probably say. Yeah, feature um, films, really, yes. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Jaws, we never expected it to have the impact it did. Mm. It's a fictitious story about a fictitious shark. I mean, there, there is real shark footage in there, which we shot, but nobody, not Steve Spielberg, not universal, not the tailors, expected it to be so success successful. Mm. It seems that the general public worldwide wanted something to hate, a baddie, a witch, yeah. a devil, something. And it turned out to be the poor old white shark. Mm. It is curious well, that there's a film like Anaconda, you know, which is, is actually... Fiji, and yet people aren't terrified of anaconda. Uh, you oh, know, I, I, I'm a little terrified of anaconda. <laughs> I'm to be honest with you. Oh, Sally. <laughs> that, that was one of the greatest quotes in, in the movie, though. Barry, I just, you know, that's why there's a, you know, film dedicated to it. I, I think one of the things, it's interesting, though, and I, I agree with Tina's point in the absolute overall, that... I'm just sort of sitting here even thinking about, you know, the, your question about, you know, is there a role? It's very hard to say because, um, you know, on the one hand, actually the, uh, the, the idea that the shark is so maligned and then potentially, you know, that's what gets um, dramatised and, and enhanced in, in uh, certain feature films and so on, it does create a greater, maybe, <laughs> surprise when you find out that the behaviour of sharks in the wild or different species of sharks are actually radically different. And so in a really counterintuitive way, I'm wondering, especially in the, um, in the realm of something that is so clearly 
a drama. And I think the key difference maybe with Jaws is it was the first of its kind. So just like the Lumiere brothers, you know, with the train coming out, you know, towards the towards the screen, you, you, you hadn't ever seen anything like that before. And it's a brilliant movie. And, uh, and in fact, the shark is often quite mysteriously um, depicted because as we all know, the legendary stories about the shark is not working. Um, mm. So I do, I do think there's an interesting relationship, maybe where it gets a little more difficult actually is in the nonfiction space and whether or not there is an emphasis on the sensationalism of the predatory behavior. That may be a more difficult relationship than, you know, Meg or something, but it's a really <laughs> interesting question. Mm. It's something that we kind of battle with a lot as well. But the, the thing is, when it comes to sort of not just Jaws fans, but, you know, shark movie fans, there's this fine line between fear and fascination, but the needle is constantly tipping towards fascination because there's just so much information about sharks now. And obviously, biographical films, even though it is about Valerie's story, the message is actually, you know, sharks are amazing. The world is amazing. We should look after this ocean, particularly all these uh, news and stories around sort of climate change and all these other things. You know, the information is just there, but people like Valerie are the inspiration and, and the conduit and, and, the, and the heart of those stories. Um, in terms of playing with sharks, what, what are you hoping is going to be the ultimate impact and, and legacy of this great film? Well, I'm hoping that it gives the general public a better understanding of a much maligned marine animal. The sharks that are potentially dangerous, and there's only a couple of them, are very large, well armed, and not very many. There are well over 200 species of shark, and most of them are totally harmless to humans. Mm. But the few, the big ones, the carcharinids, they're the ones that people are basically afraid of. They were put there by nature. They have a role to play in the ocean. They keep the oceans clean of the sick and the old and the unwary. They're the garbage men of much of the ocean that we could not handle anywhere near as well. Mm. Nature doesn't make mistakes like that. If you're going to be terribly afraid of encountering a shark, don't go swimming where they live. You choose to go into their environment. They have never chosen to come in yours. You make a decision. The same as if you make a decision to drive your car and you have an accident, you run into a tree. You made the decision to get in the car. I don't suppose you made a decision to run into a tree, but accidents happen. It's interesting that the last couple of attacks in Australia off the coast of New South Wales, they're quite recent attacks, neither of the victims blamed the shark. I thought that was a huge thing to say. Even the wife of the man who died said he wouldn't blame the shark. He was doing something he loved in someone else's world. Yeah. It's a risk you take. Even when you climb a mountain, you take a risk. You don't blame the mountain if you fall off and die. Yeah. You and I think it. that's beautifully put because, you know, we always use this word attack, but it's, it's not an attack. It's an accident. It's an encounter. An accident. That's, that's, yes. that's what it is. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They, don't, they don't have hands. They can't feel you. They feel with their teeth. It's as simple mm. as that. I think for me that, you know, I would love for people to watch the film and feel inspired by Valerie's courage to care and to take action and also to be in, inspired by the vision and to see, wow, I've never seen sharks like that before, to see them in a new light, to understand them and appreciate them as the sentient beings that they are and their right to be there. I would love to think that they're better informed about, although we didn't talk a lot about the threat to the shark, I think, you know, the, the ever present threat of overfishing and finning is really just, it's happening as we speak. And mm -hmm. 
it's an ever present danger and it's it's immediate that threat so i'm i'm just hoping that people's attention is drawn to it as a result of of the film and that people are entertained by the film as well you know there's heart and soul there's laughter there's tears there's mm. everything you'd expect when you sit down to watch a movie but that it would deeply resonate with people and they would think be thinking about it after weeks after well it certainly resonated with me it really did um guys thank you so much for your time it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you best of luck with the film just for uh, the viewers at home where can people watch this incredible movie Disney Plus. <laughs> Disney Plus. And uh, when and does it premiere? <laughs> Pay those subscriptions. Uh, guys, <laughs> thank you so, so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again soon. And best of luck with playing with sharks. Thank you. We'll watch thank your you vlog. <laughs> no worries. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. Please give us your support by subscribing to the YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok and Twitter and check out thedailyjaws.com for everything Jaws. Until next time, we'll drink to your legs. Farewell and adieu.